<laughs> Alright guys, so in this video we are going to talk about one of my favorite lights, a mini PCs. So this one did came in a casing or better said like a protection bag and not the original box. It's not a big of a deal, doesn't spoil the fun, but the reason I want to talk about it is just because I really like this tiny one. There's already like a new Chewy box out there, because this is basically what it is. So let's open it up in the last compartment. And yeah, I must say like this thing will have some limitations. I bought it back in the, in the kit, so you can see over here, it comes with a controller. It comes of course with the Chewy box itself. It's absolutely cool, we do have like two editions of the older one. And this Chewy tiny box is absolutely cool. So the Larkbook Pro, and you also have the Lark box, if I'm saying it correctly. So we do have like some minor differences with the specification what we're going to talk about. So this thing is so tiny, you can just basically use it like a mini desktop PC. Maybe play some indie games, but particularly like browse the internet. But we're just going to talk about mainly the emulation now in 2022. So what I love about these controllers, like I think it was the Bytop, if I'm saying it correctly. They're like high quality controllers. They're not like say quality wise like PlayStation 4 or something, but they're getting really close. A very nice D-pad. Even comes with a turbo. I really love turbo, especially when you want to play some retro games and you want to play some schmops. You don't need like to press the freaking button all of the time. Like the tiny neat features that. And also, don't forget, you can also use it on the PC, because I'm doing that every single day. So opening it up, here you do get some extra stuff like the HDMI cable, and of course if you want to put it behind your monitor, you can even do the two with the bracket. But there's something we're not going to do today. So, but let's take a close look at the emulation performance, and is this thing worth picking up today? This controller, before the Super Console X PC edition that I reviewed some time ago, I have never seen this device, or this piece of hardware. Normally we're always going to get these shitty PlayStation controllers, PlayStation 2, especially with a wire. But this thing has some similarities when it comes to the PlayStation 4 controller. Especially the grips. The grip is similar to the PlayStation 4 and therefore I like this controller even more. Because I'm a big fan of the PlayStation 4 controller in general, but also of the Xbox 360 by the way. But the reason I think this is going to be one of the best controls you can get for a budget because these things are not even very expensive. But overall, I hope in the future they will give us more of these controllers. So it's a super easy plug and play solution. It will work like plug and play and everything is configured on the Super Console XPC. Also with the light edition. And I think this can be a really fancy controller for in the future and now. So a quick comparison, you can see there are not 101% like what I already told you. Like there are some similarities, like especially with the trigger buttons. <laughs> no, no, no. So the trigger buttons are not like the PlayStation 4 controller, not at all. So again, it looks a little bit like it, but it isn't. But I'm not a big fan of the trigger buttons. I just want to have them like the old school style. The D-pad feels very nice, very sturdy. The same goes for the analog sticks. So when overall the quality, I like it very much. But I'll make a separate review about it in the future and test it out on some other devices. But let's talk about this bad boy, the Chewy Mini PC. So this is a really cool device, if you ask me. It's super small. But it also the form factor is super easy to bring with you. And it also comes including encasing itself, a clone controller, everything that we're going to need. Over here at the right side we're going to get an CF card input, headphone jack. At the back we're going to get the Type-C for powering on the device, HDMI out. We're going to get two times USB 3.0. Over here we're going to get nothing. We have an on and off switch. At the tap we're going to get a ventilation. And at the bottom. We're going to get a nice sticker of the Intel Celeron that is inside. Lark box, the type, and some other information. But let's take a close look at some other things. Let's talk about the specifications. So this is one tiny, really cool, mean gaming machine. The specifications are similar like different boxes, but only this thing is just super tiny. Intel Celeron G4125. It can even run up to 2.5 GHz in GPU, the Intel HD600, and this thing even has 6 GB of LPDDR4. Combination with the dual boot of Windows 10 and of course but the Zero Linux that we're going to test out in this video. So the Chewy box is basically just a Windows 10 PC that we can use in combination with a hard drive. So let's boot it up without the hard drive first. Just wanted to show you what happens. So basically what you're going to get is a dual boot machine. You can use like your typical, let's say Windows 10 PC for some office work. But you can also get into the dual boot and then you can use it like a mean gaming machine. 
So after, let's say, a couple of minutes, we're going to get ourselves the language selection. The reason why this box has been set up, and I will not do it in this video, because I wanted to focus on the Super Console PC Mini part. So that's what we're going to do. So let's connect ourselves the hard drive, and let's see if something happens. So if you think about it, like the enclosure is bigger than the freaking box itself. But okay, so after... I think a couple of minutes that it took for booting up the system, I have this idea that it is a little bit slower, of course, through the USB connection, even if it's through the row. But overall, let's take a close look at the menu itself and what are we actually going to get. Okay, so next up, let's connect the hard drive. Let's plug it in. Then we're going to plug it in one of the two USB connections and we're going to power on the device again. And if you're not going to get the boot menu, you need to go back into the settings using a keyboard because it is set to Windows boot only. And we need to choose, of course, the Botasera image. In this case, the USB through the bow port. So for the people who are not familiar with Botasera, it's basically based on Linux. You can make these packs yourself if you want to. You can just do the thing what they are doing over there. But it's more like an all-in-one kit. And what you're going to get is quite interesting. So with the Super Console X series, especially when you're looking at the previous videos I've made with the Android editions, I must say like the Android editions are nice. We have a lot of old stuff from Atari up to Commodore 64 and it's, let's say up to PlayStation 1. The Android based versions most of the time run everything just fine. But the thing is like with the mini PC editions, we're going to get more options, especially with Botocera. So this image contains even like category system, but also like when it comes to different kind of games. But uh, what we're going to do with this video is very simple. We're going to test up the high amp stuff and the reason is very simple. Because we know like the Atari and the real stuff up to PlayStation 1 will run just fine. But if you want to see some more stuff here on the channel, let me know. Because on my second channel, the Wicked Brain Fart, there are like mostly update game lists and other testing videos. But okay, so let's take a closer look at some games and let's see how they're running. Because when you're scrolling through the list over here, it feels like endless. There is so much that you can see. There is so much you can play. I think you need like time, time lifetimes to play everything. Yeah, seriously, there is so much stuff. But okay, let's take a close look at it. And what are we going to get? There is so much, so much. Alright, so first up, let's play a Thomas Wave, and this is a system that doesn't run that great on Android boxes or any like cheaper devices. But we're having like even a mini beefy system like the Chewy, you can play these games. Okay, so for the next test I want to try out Nintendo GameCube, just to see how it will run on the mini version. The stuttering you see is always something that happens with these boxes, but let's try the game and let's see how the actual gameplay is. Okay, like it has a lot of problems with the beginning of the game. Okay, so let's try the actual game, just to see what happens now. But you can hear even in the gameplay when I'm not boosting up, a struggle getting F0 GX to run properly. That happens too when you're having like not enough power. F0 GX is one of the harder games to emulate. So if you're going to choose a different game that has less problems, it's highly possible that it will run just fine. I played this game a lot on the original GameCube and I love this game so much and it's very demanding when it comes to emulation and so a great test. Next up, Cruise in the USA and this game is really demanding and a lot of emulators in combination with the low end stuff have issues with this. Glitches, stuttering. And even with the mini super console, it runs very good. 
We need to take consideration this game doesn't run well on the Pandora's box, on a Super Console X, just a normal edition, the Pro, the Stick and the Raspberry Pi 4 also has an issue with this game. Okay, so let's go to an other system, PlayStation 1. This is a system that can be played on many different devices nowadays, but still I want to include it in the testing video. So let's boot it up. Let's check the loading times. They'll be slightly longer than I again do of the USB connection. All right, let's go. Let's buckle up. And I think I'm missing out the soundtrack, so the image they are using is not complete. But it doesn't spoil the fun. Gotcha! Super edition of the console PC family. I think it will run just fine. Okay, next up, PlayStation 2. So this is a system that most of the time doesn't even run on lower end devices. Nin Ninken poop. <laughs> that, that's the long. It's a very long time I hear that word, Ninken poops. <laughs> But I say that I am very surprised to see that this game runs actually pretty decent now. What are you looking at, fuzzhead? You're talking to me? Pfft. Look at yourself, ninkin' poop. And the loading times again. Loading, 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 loading. <laughs> But I'm just surprised that this mini version seems to be running the PlayStation 2 games very well. That was like a very big difference with sound levels between the emulators. But I was expecting nothing of a problem when it comes to Sega Dreamcast. Like with the MELEC, the Android devices, it will run Dreamcast, most games. But a mini PC like this, with some beefy specs, we're going to get no problem when it comes to this normal native resolution. I think you're going to upscale it to 4K and higher resolutions, then we're going to get issues. And you just need a powerful PC for that. Alright, so next up, let's try another game. But the same with this. I won't expect any big problems. Crap. I have this idea that the controls are all messed up. Ah, there it is. So normally with this move, with a low run system, it will like struggle. Big time. But now, no problem at all. <laughs> I 
I do hear some struggles when it comes to the music, but... I don't see the weird glitches that I've seen before with Android boxes. So when you're looking at this tiny Chewy Pro Box, it's absolutely cool. This thing has a lot of potential. When you're looking at comparison with the controller, you can see like how tiny it is. Of course, the limitations are some things like we don't have like a lot of USB ports, so we need to use the hub that I've seen in the beginning of this video. But beside that point, I think it does have still like a lot of potential. It comes with a very nice price. There is a faster model out there, but you're also going to pay way more for that. But I thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become a Wicked family, and it would be great to see you in the next video.